Hey folks, it's Mark with Fire Mountain Outdoors. Thanks for watching today. Hey, all of the weapons that I'm handling now, I've verified that they're safe and all the chambers are empty and there's no ammo in them. So always verify your weapons are safe before you handle them. Today we're talking about the GDT 45 degree angled backup sights that are available via Amazon.com. Now these are pretty inexpensive. And I've actually got a couple different sets of them. And you know what? I like them. I've got some caveats, but I really, really like them. Why would you want to put a 45 degree backup iron sight on your weapon? Why wouldn't you want to just go with a typical folding backup sight? Well, I'm going to show you why. We're looking at this weapon right here. And it has a traditional long range rifle scope on it. Now, as you can see, I don't have any rail surface back here where I, I could I could mount a sight. So the scope is fixed. Where are you going to have it? You would have to take the scope off. So in this particular instance, having the backup sight, if if I don't know if you've ever hunted and you've came up on a critter that's 10 or 15 feet away and you bring it up and you can't find it in the scope or all you can see is fur that's where these come in so that we can look at it and we just can't the rifle and we can see through the ghost ring sight in the back and then this post in the front right up to 10 or 15 or 30 yards it's a really quick and rapid transition to just do that we have the same thing with this weapon so I've got an ACOG which is a four power scope I've had to mount this one in a slightly different direction as you can see the backup sight that's in the rear is in front of the ACOG the front's in the traditional spot that's actually mounted to a uh, rail height gas block it's, it's a really quick and natural transition so I like them in that instance you know if you had a traditional uh, red dot sight with zero magnification or a holographic sight a flip up backup sight might be a might be an option that you look at the problem with a flip up sight is you got to deploy it what i do like about these is they're always there and they're always deployed so now that we've talked about the positives let's look at the drawbacks to these particular these particular sights you know the fasteners that clamp them to the rail they're a they're a stupid Phillips screw you know and they're and they're not a very tough screw just putting them on with a reasonable amount of uh, pressure with the correct screwdriver the finish is really barred on them uh, these would be a lot better if they had a if they had an allen head in my opinion but I, I really don't like the fasteners that are there uh, the finish the finish on them it's a glossy black that doesn't match any of the any of the black on any of the other parts of the guns um, and it's really thin it's really easy to scrape or scratch or or whatever um, this part back here the rear sight if we elevate that in mine it's it was seated right at the bottom and that's where it zeroed in and it was fine but if your rifle was different and you had to raise that up at all this this rear sight is is really loose um, I've got two sets of these and they're both the same way when they're cranked all the way down to their lowest position it's a lot more rigid but it's still it still seems kind of chintzy and deficient to me but you know what it's all kind of relative because guess what they only cost like 25 bucks so they've got that going for them you know the other thing that I don't like about them is the uh, is the elevation detents on the on the side they're they're not very positive at all it's just a slight slight click to go and it would be really really easy just a just a bump and a rub and and you've got quite a bit of elevation change a similar complaint with all a2 style sights that I have is that if you're trying to use the finer peep in the front it's really easy to get crossed up and to be looking at one of the one of the sides 
instead of the center post. You know, the center post is black just like the sides, and in a snapshot situation, it would be really easy for me to center this instead of centering the site. And I think I'm going to fix that by, by putting some gold paint or something on there to differentiate the center. I think that that's the last of my caveats. I really like the price at 22 bucks. Um, I don't like the fasteners. The finish is pretty chintzy. Uh, but what for what they are and for their use, I think that they're a good value. As long as you know that going forward. Don't think that you're going to get super top notch, premium Noveski quality finish out of these things. You're not but you're also going to get a sight that you're really not going to be that concerned about if you get some scratches and gouges. So overall they're a good value. Uh, I like the function of them. I like the way that they're always deployed. I guess I do have one more caveat. As you can see if we stuck this in the safe I've got an extra set of protuberances that come out here. And you know ARs are kind of obnoxious as it is with all the stuff hanging off of them and you know you can buy a 21 gun safe and you can put three rifles in it because uh, they're made for 21 Ruger 1022s with iron sights. Um, so this does add an extra degree of protuberances to stick out and get caught on your seat belt in your vehicle or some webbing on your clothes and also another thing to gouge up next to your very pretty walnut stocked hunting rifle in your safe. So all that said I think I've told you everything I like about them and everything that I don't like but I think they are a good value if uh, if you have a niche that these would fill. Hey thanks for watching.